Hi students, I'll try this educational video to technologically introduce how to size the bottom plates and the annular bottom plates in storage tanks based on the API 650 standards. Of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. Well, First, I'll introduce some general rules about the bottom plates and the annular bottom plates sizing. And here, the figure that you see now in this slide presents a typical bottom plate. And as you can notice, it's composed by rectangular plates and sketch plates in the boundary. These plates are typically butt welded. The figure that you see now at uh, the right of this slide presents a bottom plate with annular bottom plates. The annular bottom plates are depicted here in red. Pay attention here, the annular bottom plates is needed only when the tank diameter is greater than 30 meters or when the bottom shell course is designed using the allowable stress for materials in group 4, 5A, 5 and 6. We note also as general rule that the nominal width of both rectangular plates and sketch plates should be no less than 1800 millimeters, unless otherwise agreed by the purchaser. Also, when calculating the required thickness of bottom plates as corroded thickness plus corrosion allowance, uh, is to note here that this corroded thickness of bottom plates should be no less than 6 millimeters. Also, it's to note as general rules that the bottom plates or the annular bottom plates should provide an outside width no less than 50 millimeters projected outside the shell. And the annular bottom plates shall have an inner radial width that provides at least 600 millimeters between the inside of the shell and any lap welded joint in the remainder of the bottom. These are the most general rules, but other specific rules should be examined in the API 650 standards. Now I'll try to explain how to determine or to size the thickness of the annular bottom plates. The thickness of the annular bottom plates is determined based on the table that you see now in this slide. It's the table 5-1 of the API 650 standards. And based on this table, we can determine directly the thickness of the annular bottom plate. And as you can notice, we have two entries for this table. We have the first entry, which is the plate thickness of first shell course. This plate thickness is associated to the corroded shell plate thickness for product design or the nominal thickness for the hydrostatic test design. Don't forget here, the considerate thickness is uh, related to the first shell course or is the one associated to the first shell course. The second entry is the stress in the first shell course. Uh, this uh, stress is uh, defined as the, as the greater of the product design stress and the hydrostatic test stress. The product design stress is determined using the formula that you see now in the slide in function of the required thickness for product which is the required thickness determined under the product design conditions and in function of the corrosion allowance and uh, in function of the corroded thickness which is equal to the as-built thickness minus the corrosion allowance here the as-built thickness is related to the material availability and in function of the product design stress while the hydrostatic test stress is determined using the formula that you see at the right of this slide in function of the required thickness under the hydrostatic test conditions and uh, the as-built thickness and the hydrostatic test stress. It's to note here that the product design stress denoted by SD and the hydrostatic test stress denoted by ST are determined as I explained in the previous educational video. Don't forget here all the considered thicknesses used in these formula are those of the first shell course. Finally, the required thickness for the annular bottom plates should be the greater of the required thickness for product denoted by TD and the required thickness for hydrostatic test denoted by TT determined using the table 5-1. 
It's important to note that this table is applicable only for an effective product height lower than 27 meters. The effective product height is the product between the maximum design liquid level denoted by H and the design specific gravity of the stored liquid denoted by G. Now for the radial width of the annular bottom plates, it's determined based on the formula that you see now in this slide. WR is the radial width. It's determined in function of the thickness of the annular bottom plate denoted by TB, which is determined based on the table 5-1, uh, as I explained uh, previously in this educational video, and also in function of the maximum design liquid level H and the design specific gravity of the stored liquid G. Please don't forget that this uh, radial width should be in accordance with the general rules associated to the annular bottom plates in terms of outside width and inner radial width that I explained previously in this educational video. That's all for this educational video. Please, if you have any questions, remarks, suggestions, please mention it in the comments. Thank you very much for your attention.